people ask me about the firm. So just if you bear with me, a few, few facts about the firm. Um, I sit on the global leadership team as well. Um, it's five of us to do that. And our global firm is $37 billion in revenue. We employ 220,000 people. Uh, our business here in the UK is just under three million pound business. And we employ 20,000 people. So as well as running a business, that gives us a huge societal responsibility in everything we do. Um, and sometimes it's important as well to explain to people the breadth of PwC. Because most people associate us with major corporates, whether it be auditing, consulting, tax or deals. In fact, our second biggest business within PwC in the UK is our private business network. And in fact, if you actually looked at our private business network on a standalone basis, it would, be the, it would actually be the fifth largest professional services firm in the UK on its own. And some other people don't realise just how much we are a major private business, professional services business. Um, in terms of our business, um, we produce every year uh, an annual report. And from three years ago, we moved away from paper in the digital age and produced a digital annual report. And that gave us two very distinct advantages. Firstly, we had more cupboard space because we didn't have loads of annual reports sat in cupboards that we never ever managed to give out. But the second fact is it gave us the opportunity to actually understand what our readership wanted to read about the firm. Now, I know you'll all be equally shocked to learn that they weren't that interested in my chairman's annual statement. You'll be very surprised by that. The actual facts they were interested in this year were as follows. The first most interesting fact of them was our diversity statistics. Because having been one of the very first organisations to publish the gender pay gap, and we do so every year, and hold ourselves responsible for driving that forward and improving it, we've not got as far as we want to, but we are very much focused on it. This year we're one of the very first organisations Publish the ethnicity pay gap. And that actually had 35 million hits within two days publishing that information. And two byproducts of that was firstly, my daughter who's 15, who has never knowingly read a newspaper in her life and generally isn't normally complimented by 8.30 in the morning, actually texted me at 8 o'clock on the day that we released that information to ask me why are we paying people from a different background? a different salary to those from a British background. And that's because people don't understand how the pay gap is calculated. It's based on different roles and ratings, not different pay within grade. But again, it showed me just how important shining a spotlight and explaining issues of diversity and inequality really are. That afternoon, I was at a CBI President's Committee meeting with other CEOs and chairmen. And the two comments I had was the first comment was that, that was brave, which always makes you slightly worried. Um, the second comment I had was you've just raised the bar for all of us here. And our HR departments are back at the office racing around trying to find the same data for ourselves. And that's a good thing. That's a responsible thing for a business to do. The second area of particular interest this year was technology. Partly how are we dealing with our needs in technology as a business? undoubtedly will need more technologists in the future. And we have now launched two apprentice degrees, one at Birmingham, one at Leeds, from next September, where we will help train technologists for our future needs of business. And more importantly, by using the apprentice levy, that will be degrees that will be free for those people taking them, and thus improving our societal balance within our organisation to encourage a more diverse workforce. Because our strength as a business will only be if we're relevant in terms of technology, but also relevant in terms of the people we employ being facing back on society in an equal way. And then bring that brings me to the third area, which is our societal contribution. That's particularly relevant. Because one thing technology does is it doesn't respect diversity and it doesn't respect equality. And I know if I ask my mum what her biggest fear is. Her fear is her grandchildren will have no jobs because the robots will have them. Whether she's right or wrong, that is definitely a fear out there. And therefore I think it's even more important that organisations such as ours put their hands up and take responsibility 
for making sure that we contribute to society in the widest possible way beyond economics into societal contribution. And that's why we're a major supporter of the Social Entrepreneur Network, both in terms of mentoring social entrepreneurs, but also in terms of bringing them into our supply chain. Our objective over the next three years is to have 10 million pounds of our supply chain going towards social enterprises. Those that support people with disabilities, either physical or mental, or people that haven't had the same chances in life. And so I'm sure you'll bear with me with just one final advert before I finish. But if you go back down Tooley Street towards London Bridge, you'll go past a restaurant outside our more London office called the Brigade. And last month, Brigade celebrated its sixth year. And the Brigade restaurant is a social enterprise. It's supported by PwC. But its, it's main aim is to help homeless people back into the workplace, back into society. And in its six years of existence, it's helped 1,200 homeless people back into full-time employment, back into society. And again, I think that's an example that economic success and societal contribution are not mutually exclusive. And I think that's really important on an evening like this evening. I wish you all a happy Diwali. Thank you.